Hello everyone and welcome back. Here we are at the flying machine. Now in this episode we're going to be covering a, a number of different tactics. Um, this first one that uses the coin on this screen, obviously only if you have the coin in your route. It's not actually that difficult to go for. Um, I would say though that there are a number of tricks similar to it, including that one, that you may not want to go for. There's one you can do in this room for example. And because of the amount of time that they'll cost you if you should screw them up, uh, and considering how late into the game flying machine is, you may not want to go for them. That's a decision I expect people to make at their own discretion. Uh, you should be choosing the rate at which you learn the speedrun of this game and what you're willing to go for. Recently, Smoggy took back the world record from Applesauce, and he actually doesn't go for a lot of the tricks that Applesauce does, because Smoggy is the type of player who prefers to go for things he knows he can do that he's consistent at doing. Whereas Applesauce was more of the type of player who felt like if it was something worth doing, if it was something that you were capable of learning and executing, that he should try to include it in his run. Speaking of difficult things to do, this is the updated Quick Loan Dinghy Dropper, including the boat skips that you can grab this ladder. I will be showing off the alternative Quick Kills that don't use that, so if you want to know how to kill it quickly using the Chaos Orb or the Flare Wand, uh, then you can look forward to that later on in the video. Uh, this is the room where we grab the propeller dagger. It costs 4,000 gold, and we passed a number of different um, 200 gems that are hidden away. Uh, you could also break checkpoints if you don't have the money that you need. You really should have the money that you need without having to farm in any type of way, shape, or form, but if you happen to die somewhere, there is money in the stage that you can pick up. Reminder that at this point in the run, we'll have a maximum of 4 HP in Conjurer's Coat, which makes this next room, the Triple Jawa Room, incredibly lethal uh, if you're not moving through it carefully. So please study this method of getting through the room. And now we have an auto scroller. And yeah, there's not a whole lot going on here, so just make sure you don't die. It's fairly simple to get through without falling into any pits. Do keep in mind that, uh, again, hover minis deal a heart and a half on contact, and there have been many times when I've gotten to this point in the run and I've taken damage, so I only have maybe a full heart or less. Um, so I'm within one shot range for a lot of the remaining hazards in the stage. And there's no real food that you can pick up either. There is a fan cycle coming up. Um, in fact, there are a bunch of different fans that we'll be catching. So. If you do happen to keep up with the stage at a brisk pace and you don't make any mistakes, if you're not getting screwed by RNG, um, then you should be able to beat this fan cycle. Um, I won't actually have proper footage of the fan cycle you want to catch because I actually struggle really hard. This is, this is not an easy stage and it's not easy to be able to get to the appropriate fan cycle, so don't count on it, just be prepared to, to wait for the fans to stop blowing, essentially. Uh, there is a visual cue for the two wind tunnels, so when we get to that part of the video, you will be able to see exactly how we're lining it up so that we can get through that room. And then there is some food right here in this room you can pick up before you fight Propeller Knight. Um, but again, it's not necessary because Propeller won't actually be able to hit you throughout the majority of the fight. But if you lack confidence in your ability to execute this quick kill, and you feel like you're going to end up killing him after he's come back down, uh, then yeah, go ahead and grab it. Um, again, Propeller is not specifically a dangerous fight from the fact that he can hit you, it's more about him knocking you into a pit. So about this first room, you're literally just mashing jump as hard as you can. Um, you'll get three jumps off before you actually pogo the first enemy. And even if you were to do it frame perfectly, you would not take damage or fall into that pit. So don't worry about it! Mash it as hard as you can, to your heart's content! Now for the next coin, you'll want to have coin handy, because this trick is extremely difficult. So this is Applesauce's setup. You're doing a full jump as soon as you land on the first platform. Throw the coin near the apex of your jump. When the animation for throwing the coin has finished, you'll be able to swing at the coin to juggle it. You'll want it to land on the second from last platform. Jump up, knuckle it, and then as you fall after that second from last platform, you'll knuckle it very low. As soon as you think you can, just make sure that you knuckle it so that you can actually grab the ladder. This is only saving the amount of time it would take for that last platform to fall down so that you could grab the ladder. So this is a really difficult trick, not a lot of reward here, and if you screw up you'll fall down a screen which would cost you way more time than this trick saves. So here's your trick at full speed. Jump, jump coin, reflect, knuckle, knuckle. 
This next trick is a standard for the any percent run. You'll just be jumping over to where this Beto is on the second platform, land with a shovel swing so you juggle it, jump and pogo off of it, turn around, make sure that your movement uh, will not stop you from jumping off the platform properly, and then knuckle twice to get past the wisdom. That said, there is an obscenely more difficult trick that you can use to get through this room a little bit faster with the coin. At the top of the ladder, you'll be mashing Jump and Relic at the same time. You want to fire a coin off as soon as possible, immediately switch to Knuckles, and then land, swing at the coin, jump immediately to cancel the swing, knuckle immediately, and then pogo immediately. And this is not an easy trick. <laughs> uh, Applesauce believes that he has practiced it enough for it to be consistent for runs, whereas Smoggy did not go for this at all in his new world record. And I feel like I was able to get this consistently enough with practice, but I don't know if I'd be comfortable enough to go for it in runs. Again, at full speed, jump coin, reflect, knuckle, pogo, knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Now, if you were to go back and look at older runs, you would see that Diggy Dropper Quick Kill has certainly evolved. We now have a fairly optimal way of doing it without additional weapons. So the beginning is incredibly simple. You're going to jump up and swing at the Diggy Dropper six times. As you approach, you'll be getting two swings on its first dip. Diggy Dropper will start to rise at this point, so you'll have to do two more swings that are near the apex of your jump. Delay your jump for the last set of swings so that when Dinghy Dropper lands it doesn't cause you to get stunned by the impact. Uh, hold a charge slash on the second swing. You'll be reflecting one of the bombs with its charge slash and then you'll be knuckling through the Dinghy Dropper. You want to get kind of close to it before you start knuckling so that you'll actually get all the way across it in three knuckles. To finish the fight, you'll be pogoing off the dinghy dropper. You want to make sure that you jump high enough before you pogo. So delay your pogo just a little bit. This way you'll have the height that you need as you hit the screen transition to make it up onto the next platform where the ladder is. So once again, here's your dinghy dropper quick kill. One, two, three, four, five, six into charge slash. One, two, three, jump pogo. Now if you want to throw orbs into this fight, uh, you can do a slightly easier variation of the kill as well. With the floor being separated into tiles, at around the fifth tile in, you'll do a full jump and fire two of your Chaos Orbs. Uh, this will deal just enough damage at this position so that you can do the rest of this quick kill. So do three knuckles to get across the dinghy dropper onto the right side. And then very simply from here, you'll just be doing a uh, swing into charge slash. So you do uh, three of these, so it's one swing into charge slash, another swing into charge slash, and then one more last swing into charge slash, and that will leave the dinghy dropper with one HP. From here, you'll jump and make sure you get the height again so that when you pogo off the dinghy dropper and kill it, you can hit the transition and get up onto the platform with the ladder. So at full speed, jump, one, two, one, two, three, swing, slash, swing, slash, swing, slash, jump, pogo. The only real difference when using the Flare Wand is that you won't be able to get 3 hits, so since you're only dealing 2 damage to start this fight, you'll be starting it very similarly. You'll be firing the Flare Rod twice, knuckling to get across, but you'll need to do one extra hit. So after the first Charge Slash, I do an extra jump swing before I do the remaining 2 swing Charge Slashes. And then I pogo off, as I did with the Chaos Orbs. Again, Flare Wand, jump, fire twice, knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. Swing, slash, swing, swing, slash, swing, slash, jump, pogo. Now this trick with the coin will not take you many tries, so just give it some practice and you'll be able to get it pretty consistently. Uh, after you start to fall, fire your coin so that you're below it and make sure you knuckle it on the way down. You should just barely be able to get into this little alcove. It's pretty easy. Another fairly easy trick is in this room and it does require a damage boost that's the only thing that kind of sucks about it uh, just make sure you're climbing up high enough on this ladder before you propeller dagger turn around to damage boost and then pogo twice off the jellyfish uh, iframes will prevent you from getting stunned or thrown away so you'll be able to leave the room easily however However, <laughs> there is a more difficult trick that you can do that is uh, damage boost free uh, you'll have to wait just a little bit so that the jellyfish can go through their electrifying cycle then you'll immediately let go of the ladder while holding left so that you start to knuckle through the jellyfish. Knuckling means that you won't be taking damage from them, and then after the fourth jellyfish is taken out, the fifth one should just barely finish being electrified, so you'll flip out of your uh, fourth knuckle and then pogo off of it and grab the ladder. This is slightly faster than the original one, um, but screwing it up means that you'll fall down a screen and you'll take more damage. Again, you climb up, wait a bit, one, two, three, four, pogo. Now I'm explaining this room really briefly uh, because when you dagger into wind, it'll actually propel you upwards. You'll carry that momentum while going forwards, and that's 
pivotal for the next room. You're also trying to keep up with a cannonball cycle in this room, so make sure as soon as you enter the room, and as soon as you think you can get over this pit, you'll do a propeller dagger to get over it. Propeller dagger as soon as you land. And then the first Jawa should be coming into view. Do a full jump. This will kind of grab its attention and bait it into a proper position. And then you'll be daggering as, as low as you can get. Um, this will help bait the Jawa to blow above you. You'll be going just underneath it. You'll want to wait near the center of this fan, and then you'll be daggering to leave. And that's when you'll start holding forward again. This way you'll have the momentum of the fan carrying you upwards while you go forwards. You'll just barely have the height you need to pogo off this first cannonball, and then you'll do another propeller dagger off screen so that there's no chance the third Jawa will be able to hit you before you leave and enter the auto scroller. So again, triple Jawa at full speed. Dagger, dagger, jump, low dagger, wait, dagger, pogo, dagger. Victory dance! A quick note about the following room. If you're dying, it's because you were holding forward the entire time. So just make sure you're briefly letting go of forward before you jump off the ladder and pogo. And then you can hold forward and you won't be caught by the wind and then carried into the spikes. Now the visual cue for the wind tunnel room is based on Shovel Knight's helmet, not the horns. As soon as the helmet touches the ceiling, you'll dagger twice without holding right. During the second dagger is when you'll start to hold right. You'll just start to approach these spikes and then as soon as the wind finishes, like right as the wind's finishing is when you dagger again. Too early you hit spikes, too fast you bonk into the little square, uh, pogo off the jellyfish, then dagger again and you'll be able to one cycle this wind tunnel. Again at full speed, helmet touch, dagger, dagger hold right, dagger, pogo, dagger. Now the propeller fight is not an easy fight. This is actually one of the first guys that I made for Shovel Knight period was a fight strictly on Propeller Knight's fight. I'm going to be showing off the better way to do this that involves the low percent tactic. Although you can do swing into charge slash on propeller, uh, it is not the preferred method and it's not going to make you a better player. I'd rather you learn this way of doing this fight. The key difference here is that we're using the coin as we start. You'll jump and throw a coin and that's really the only difference between this and the low percent fight. You'll have to get used to this cadence of landing with a swing, jumping, turning around, and then swinging again. Then you'll be doing the same thing but now in the opposite direction where you land with a swing, jump, turn around, swing again. And then once more, land with a swing, jump, turn around, swing again. So you'll be doing one, two, three, four, five, six for that first set. Now in order to get Propeller to fly up to the top left corner, you have to hit him during his thrust. If you do a full jump as soon as you land, and then swing as soon as you land, you'll hit him during that thrust, so that'll set up the timing for you pretty easily. And then again, it's one, two, three, four, and then five and six. And then this is when he'll start to fly up. Land with a swing, jump with a swing, let your swings push you to the left, and then start pogoing off of him. Uh, at this point you'll want to get your propeller dagger handy so that you can just dagger into him for the last four hits. So again, here's your fight at full speed. Jump coin, one, two, three, four, five, six, full jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, pogo. One, two, three, four. Again, this really is not the easiest fight, so please make sure you're practicing it. You don't need the coin. The majority of your damage is just going to be from these shovel swings. This is the type of rhythm that you need to get into. This is basically the fastest way of attacking in this game, so make sure that you're practicing it. It will make you a better player overall. The hardest part of this fight is the fading back after the second set of swings. You are using your recoil from the last two swings, uh, staying inside of his hitbox, and with the propeller dagger, this is entirely free, um, but if you wanted to do it strictly low percent, you could. And you would just be Poe going off him to finish the fight. Let's get him! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, full jump. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, Pogo. And this is how it looks. Pat yourself on the back, this is not an easy kill. You should feel like celebrating if you manage to get this done. Don't forget the dagger out of dream sequences. So that's the flying machine. Next time we'll be heading over to Clockwork Tower. Uh, stages from here on out just are not going to be easy, but uh, we will see you next time. Be ready for more coin shenanigans. Thank you for watching.